Greetings from Webster Cottage, Hanover, New Hampshire, on July 4th, 2011. I am Daniel Webster, deceased and distinguished statesman, orator, and Dartmouth College graduate, class of 1801. 250 years ago, on July 4th, 1761, on behalf of King George III of England, Provincial Governor Benning Wentworth of the British Colony of New Hampshire granted a charter for the wilderness that is now Hanover. Is it not remarkable that on July 4th, 1776, 15 years to the date, there was a declaration of independence from England? Now it is 2011. 250 years have passed, and citizens are commemorating this founding event. Happy Bison Quinquagenary Hanover, or to keep it simple, happy 250th birthday. Join me as I tell you about Hanover's parade of history, community spirit, and old-fashioned fun. It is my distinct honor to introduce you to James Wright, President Emeritus of a small college in Hanover called Dartmouth. We celebrate today 250 years of building a town, over 240 years of building a college, and what, 235 years of building a republic. We celebrate today all of those years of building a shared community. If the world has changed markedly in the last 250 years, the basic bonds of trust and of a shared commitment to this place where we live, these remain strong today. Dartmouth is delighted to be a part of Hanover, and I am pleased to extend a salute to our neighbors and our friends on this very special occasion. Now on to the next 250. Thank you. In addition to posthumous advice from deceased citizens like me and Reverend Eliezer Wheelock, founder of Dartmouth College, a treasure trove of programs, photos, and movies from past commemorations was unearthed. Recollections of the town's major events over the last 50 years were recorded by dozens of thoughtful citizen authors and editors. Edward Latham, chair of the 1961 Bicentennial Commemoration provided wise guidance. The Hanover Improvement Society generously supported the publication of the 250 history book. Hanover's 250th birthday party was planned for over a year and climaxed with a festive July 4th weekend. Citizens of all ages were invited to join. Art projects flourished in all the schools, Logo competitions led to memorable designs for the Upper Valley, town, and upcoming events like Pig and Wolf and Running of the Balls. For the past nine years, Pig and Wolf, two whimsical wood sculptures, have entertained the town. When I was a Dartmouth student around 1800, we saw pigs on the green and wolves in the woods. Pig and Wolf enjoyed a new life all over town through a fiberglass street art project and fantastic fundraiser. 2011 was a year of many anniversaries. The Dartmouth Outing Club celebrated its 100th. The Dartmouth Skating Band joined the Winter Carnival at the Occam Pond Park. 
an annual Parks and Recreation winter event. Pig and wolf snow sculptures were everywhere. Extra castle ice was saved in February to make ice cream in July. The Cold Region's Research and Engineering Laboratory, known locally as Krell, celebrated its 50th with a brilliant Army Corps of Engineering ice castle. The Hanover Food Co-op celebrated its 75th as the oldest food co-op in the country. The Hanover Historical Society was founded in 1961 and turned 50 in 2011. I understand they are giving tours of Webster Cottage. How Library and the Historical Society collaborated to present a series of lectures by local historians. Community building, history, and fun were embraced by all the schools. For the 200th anniversary of our nation in 1976, a colonial house was built near the elementary school. Every year, Colonial Days reminds the children of our rural past. The Race School Parent-Teacher Organization sponsored a fiberglass pig. Patient art teachers guided the 600 eager student and staff artists as they placed fingerprints, rabbit ears, and whiskers on the sculpture. Hundreds of pig and wolf hats were created and showed up on stage, at parties, and in parades. GeoQuest challenges, history panel and street banner projects at Richmond Middle School provided students with investigative challenges and creative opportunities. Teachers, volunteer historians, and artists coached the creative students. Festive banners were designed and painted by kids in art class. Down on the Hanover Plain, the town was getting all dressed up for the 250 party. Gardens were planted, banners were raised on Main Street, Webster Cottage tours began. Exhibits went up in Baker and Howe libraries. Historical photos were placed in Main Street storefronts. The Hanover Fire Department acquired spiffy new uniforms, trained and formed an impressive honor guard. Twenty spectacular pig and wolf sculptures had a coming out party and appeared all over town. It was fitting that the first event in the 250th commemoration was the 50th anniversary muster day celebrated on Hanover Center's ancient parade ground. Several miles northeast of the green is Hanover Center. Hanover Center was the physical center of the town at the time of the land grant and remained so for 75 years. Muster Day traditionally honors those who died in service to the country and all veterans with patriotic music, speeches, flags, rifle salutes, and the playing of taps. A brass plaque explaining the 1761 charter was placed on the village square. A bench was dedicated to Lillian Bailey, who lived at the parade ground and founded the modern muster day in 1961. This was made possible by the Betty Park Hill Trust. <laughs> On June 24th and 25th, the Hanover Center Fair continued the 250 events, celebrating its own 50th anniversary.
The homegrown parade goes twice around the parade ground. Other crowd pleasers include the ox pole, book sale, auction, kids midway, and fantastic fair food. The old timers and crowds of Etna and Hanover Center always turn out for these classic small town New England reunions and fairs. On July 2nd, the birthday events blasted off. A perfect summer Saturday evening welcomed a happy crowd to fireworks on Garapé Field off Reservoir Road. Glow sticks and patriotic attire were everywhere. The Hanover Fire Department crew raised a giant old floor on the tower truck. Hanover High Band members trumpeted out the star-spangled banner to the bomb bursting in air and the rocket's red glare. Sunday, July 3rd, dawn, with pouring rain and no sun. Umbrellas came out and the red, white, and blue on the green events were postponed to Monday, July 4th. Rollins Chapel near the northeast corner of the green provided a dry and peaceful space for a Sunday service of thanksgiving. Reverend Eliezer Wheelock, founder of Dartmouth College, joined the religious leaders of the community for this service of gratitude. The bel canto singers and Rollins Chapel organist provided uplifting music. Hopkins Center was the weather backup location for a foot-stomping, standing room only concert planned in conjunction with the 250th anniversary. Louisiana musician Buckwheat Zydeco and his band sang to an estimated audience of a thousand. With the free outdoor concert moved into Spalding because of rain, Hopkins Center ushers opened the doors so that overflow enthusiasts could listen and watch from the lobby. The concert was sponsored by the Hopkins Center with generous support by Dartmouth College. Parade Grand Marshals Katie and John Manchester exchanged their organizing whips for patriotic attire to lead off a remarkable extravaganza. History was on parade, as well as a lot of silliness and fun.
Everyone loves a parade. Parade people poured onto the Dartmouth Green for a red, white, and blue party. The event featured some famous deceased citizens, lots of live ones, the running of the bells, and the running of the ball. Presidents, public servants, animals, great food, funny faces, and crazy races. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Ladies and gentlemen, please follow me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. A big round of applause for the Cub Scouts and the Boy Scouts. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. And Patrick.
steady and loyal friend in Governor Wentworth, Governor Benning Wentworth, of course. He sent a collection of books to augment our poor library, and I believe he would have done more for us, but he was forced to leave when the colonies revolted. <laughs> it was a loss for the institution, and I felt a personal loss as well, for he was ever a source of wise counsel. Well, I have uh, come to find my home, and thank goodness I have found it. I was looking for it off by the green. The Ripleys used to own it, and uh, I rented a place up in their top floor, but uh, I went by and I couldn't find it, so I just started asking people where it was. Dartmouth Hotel is a swell brick building, and its owner, Hod Ferry, makes frequent improvements on it. That's true, but if you ask Mrs. Ferrari for a bath, so likely direct you down to the river. But otherwise, we're pretty genteel around here. They've moved the road to the side of the green, put up a fence, and passed an act forbidding cattle and hogs to run through the streets. The streets are much cleaner now. Smith's Candy and Cracker Factory is located down Main Street that way. Houses with neat picket fences line Lebanon Street, and if you look down River Road just that way, you'll see Miss Stockbridge's Sabbath School. Now, if you were a very wayward boy of the town, Miss Stockbridge might recruit you for her school. She is an absolute saint, and her boys worship her. I know for a fact quite a few of them would have turned out to be complete bums, but not for her. They had graduated from Sabbath.
250th birthday party is over, but left much behind that will benefit, educate, and entertain Hanover citizens as the town moves toward the tercentennial in 2061. The Hanover History Book records the many sea-changing events of the last 50 years. The Hanover Center Monument documents forever the significance of the center in the history of Hanover. Thanks to the fundraising prowess of the pigs and wolves, Hanover citizen will enjoy the new Hayes Farm Recreation Area behind Etna Fire Station and the playground at Thompson Terrace Fields. Perhaps even more lasting will be the archiving of the 250th that will inform the piglets and wolves now in the Hanover schools as they march toward the 300th birthday of party 50 years from now. In addition to the generous support of town departments and the extraordinary efforts of the leaders and steering committee members, dozens of citizens too numerous to list volunteered their time and efforts to the celebration. Here are many of them at work, making this a memorable event in the town's storied history.